So West Indies and New Zealand are preparing to square off in a bilateral series starting in late November and ending in December. They are down to play uh, three T20 internationals, the first of which will be played on November 27 in Auckland, uh, while the first of two test matches will bowl off on December 3 in Hamilton. We understand as well that there will be an A-team series happening alongside the two test matches. I'm joined by Akim Green as we discuss the possible uh, combination of players that would make up those two squads for the international aspect of that series. The chief selector, Roger Harper, uh, did mention that West Indies are set for an extended camp in New Zealand. The 15-man test squad, along with five reserves, and a 14-man T20 squad will leave for New Zealand on October 27. Akim, maybe we can start with the T20 squad. We know that the World Cup has been shifted now to the end of 2021, and that is something that uh, would be on the radars of both these teams as they head into that series. From the West Indian perspective, we know that uh, the Chief Selector Harper has said that all players are available, which would mean that those players in the IPL uh, currently, once they make themselves available, would have to leave early um, you know, to head off on that tour. But let's talk a bit about a combination of players that, uh, in your mind, Akeem, that um, could make up that squad to New Zealand for the T20 aspect. It all depends on the narrative you want to take. Are, are you going on the, on the narrative where you say, look, let's give our high performers from CPL an opportunity to international exposure to see what we have on the reserve? Or do you say then, um, given the uncertainty with COVID, you know, the R series plan, there's supposed to be Sri Lanka coming, the R series on the agenda for 2021, but the uncertainty of COVID and the series could be canceled and all this different stuff. You don't know how much opportunity you would have to get international T20 cricket being played. So then you will want to start from now to give your best possible representation of that World Cup squad from New Zealand series. It depends on which narrative. For me, I've been asked, I'm going with the latter in terms of starting from now in getting the 15 members or whosoever you're looking to be in India next October. I want them to be in the West Indies setup from now and playing together and understanding different roles. Because one big thing I'm going to say, 2016 was four years ago. You know, there were a lot of young teams at West Indies defeated and they were the experienced team. Teams have grown in understanding how to combat West Indies since then. There are a lot of different tactics bowlers are using to combat power hitting. For example, they're doing a lot of wide yorkers, you know. That is, obviously, you've seen in the IPL, let us ham, humbug a lot. Pollard, you short ball has affected Russell, etc. We don't know how much in the rain will be a factor given his issues with his actions. So while West Indies on paper certainly have a strong team, you know, they, they aren't to me that little as before, given the opposition have become better against them. So we'd want to start giving them much as possible time rehearsing different roles in the West Indies colors rather than franchise cricket. So for me, from now, I'm going with all my big guns in New Zealand to start preparing for that World Cup. But you mentioned what happened um from 2016 to now, a lot has changed uh, indeed. Um, and while the West Indies remain the most successful team in World T20 cricket, um, they have been struggling in bilateral series. And we have seen over the last couple of years, they have not been winning series as they should, although they have been able to put up at least maybe a half of, of, of those quality players that we, we spoke about that would have been at those World T20 events. Um, the World Cup uh, would have been held at this time had it not been for COVID. And... Um, all things being equal, we would expect that all the superstars, the T20 superstars, would have been available for that tournament. One year after, uh, those players, of course, adding on age, and one of the, the, the contentious um, issues is whether or not Christopher Henry Gale uh, would be available for that World Cup. We know that he missed the CPL, um, and he's not played so far in the IPL. But since the World T20 in 2016, Akeem, since that 100 against England. He's uh, played in 10 international innings, 125 runs, an average of 12.5, an aging Gale, a higher score of 40 since that 100. So how do we include Gale in a, in a T20 setup, maybe starting with this series? Would you go for no. him? It's, 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 I'm actually on defense. You know, I wrote yeah. about it yesterday, but I'm actually on defense in it because, look, Gale is such a dynamic player. Gail is Gail. Gail could do so much damage to any opposition, right? But the thing is, it is a pros and cons situation. He's not running as before, you know, he's not as mobile between the wickets yeah. as before. And I know the World Cup is going to be in India, right? So there's a flat pitches there. But as I said, teams have found ways to counteract West Indies power hitting. 
and the, and the new modus operandi quality T20 cricket is obviously being great for our hitters, but also being able to make take quick singles. You look at Virat and AB throughout this this IPL, how how good they were with hitting the big boundaries and able to rotate the strike on a regular basis. That is something that Gail hasn't been doing. All of these Western cricketers we talk about, Pollard, etc., right? They are not the starters they had before who come out from ball one and blast or big sixes. You know, they take time to get going. So let's go a bit practical. Simmons as well takes a bit time to get off the mark. Gale is taking time to get off the mark. They aren't taking quick singles. Wicket goes down. Let's say they're, I guess, started out for two at the end of the power play. It means the likes of Hetmeyer, Poo, and everyone else is coming in under pressure to get West Indies up to a 180 par total, which is yeah. the usual thing in India. So th that, those are the complexities you have when you have a Chris Gale in your team. And that is why I said, you know, it's on defense. But, you know, the World Cup is a year from now, and there's a lot of series that is in between then. Hopefully, COVID it doesn't spike worldwide, and, and they have to postpone or cancel those series. And he can play international cricket. And if he's in form, I'm saying Gale goes to the World Cup. If he's not in form and he isn't playing enough series prior to that World Cup, he does not go, in, in my opinion. But if he is scratching form and he's simply playing the t 20 for West Indies and obviously some leagues in between, and he's in form and he's producing, I'm carrying Gale to the World Cup. But if he isn't, he's not in my World Cup squad. But there must be a clear line of communication, though, between the selection panel and Christopher Gale, because you have seen before where he has opted to resign and then return to international cricket. So, so that is something yeah. that has to be clear. Uh, the selectors and Gale would have to sit down and decide, well, hey, um, I'm available for the World Cup in, in 2021, or I'm not available. And, and that, that, that communication line has to be clear. Another issue would be Sulena Rain Akim. Um, we, we know what happened in the news last week um, being called in the IPL. Uh, if he plays one more time and is called, but that's the end of him for the, at least the IPL. How, how much of a, of a blow is um, the West Indies not having a Sule Narayan at the World Cup? And do you risk playing him in, in this New Zealand series? Yeah, I, I would. I would. I would. Uh, you look, Sule Narayan and Gale are, are in the same boat, in my opinion. These guys, while some of them aren't producing as they would like as before, the name alone, when, when, you know, when you see a Sule Narayan having to come into it, he doesn't, have all of the, I guess, the mystery as he had when he first started. But batsmen still treat him with great respect because they know what he's capable of doing. And, and a lot of times, you look back at the fact, I guess, in, when, in, the, in the IPL, you know, when McCullum was there and, 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 you know, they talk about the fact that when Narayan is there, you only look at f 16 overs, you know. Yeah. His four are so economical. You say, look, Narayan is going to deal with four. I can plan for 16 overs. That is the impact he still has, you know, and that is why I believe, you know, if he is willing and he's confident enough in his ability, he goes to New Zealand. Um, you know, Sonal Narayan is a big factor. Obviously, over the years, he hasn't played since India or here in the Caribbean last year, but he is a, 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 a great, potent cricketer. And with him in any team, it looks very different on paper. And it can be a, a good opportunity for the likes of Pollard to have more resources to call upon. Yeah, and... and like Gale as well, I agree with what you're saying. Um, like Gale as well, though, there must be clarity of thought uh, between the, the selectors and the Rhine as well. Whether he's committed to Western East Cricket, that's another story. Um, we have seen in the past where he has opted out uh, of series and of global tournaments as well. So that is something that the selectors and the Rhine will have to sit down and decide whether he would be available for this New Zealand series as well yeah. as the World Cup. What I don't want is that these players opt out to, I guess, four or five series and then you see they pop up back one series before the World Cup or they pop up back in the World Cup squad. I don't want that because you'll be disenfranchising someone who's been playing all the time. I would have the expectation, legitimate expectation, that based upon their good performances throughout those international series, that they're in line for World Cup selection. And then they just pop up back, I'm available to play for the World Cup and they're in the World Cup squad. I don't like that. That is unfair to the system. And to be honest, it discourages people. You know, yeah. you play cricket all the time and then just because... Of, of yes, you're, you're a great player, but then you pop up and say, I'm ready to play back for West Indies now. To me, that's totally unfair and it shouldn't be allowed. In my opinion, if, if um, Sullivan Ryan decides that he's not going, or not going to play international cricket, he's not going to the World Cup. Unfair comparison, but I would go with, with a guy who performed in the CPL. Got runs, got wickets, Ross and Chase. Um, we didn't expect him to do that well. Maybe a lot of people didn't expect him to do that well 
in the T20 format, given the style of play that we know Ross and Chase would bring to the fore. But he got 225 runs, picked up nine wickets, and I think he's a, a, a like like replacement if Sunil Narayan decides that he would not uh, be available for West Indies duties. Your thoughts? Yeah, he has an economy <laughs> rate of under five. And yeah. I, again, I use the word gold dust. That is gold dust in T20 cricket. However, uh, given the West Indies, I guess, back in order and how they would set up, but that's a pretty I really one. believe, yeah, that because he won't be batting in, in the top five. Right. Um, you know, so he would basically be playing as an outright bowler. And then you would say, then if you're going to pick someone who to be an outright bowler, you would want to go with a more threatening, a threatening bowler. So that would come back to the legs of obviously maybe Hayden Walsh, etc. So that, that is the predicament he would be in. Obviously, it's a good choice in terms of your wrong effort. But Ross and Chase in the West Indies T20 team at the World Cup isn't going to be batting higher than six there about. And then obviously at the bottom there, you have the legs of Kimo, uh, DJ Bravo, who can occupy those positions. So that, that is what in front of his cricket, he has the luxury of offering that role. But to be the sole spinner for West Indies team in a World Cup team, that, that is a, a difficult, a difficult one to fathom. You know, because let, let's be put it practical. Let's say you have Gail there and there's Evan Lewis, there's Lendl Simmons, there's Hetmeyer, there is Nicholas Puran. You know, th those are players that must play, right? And then you obviously have Captain Pollard and depending on how Russell needs are, he's in there. And then there's Bravo. Yeah. You know, who do you see him batting ahead? It just it doesn't add up there. And then obviously you have obviously Cottrell, I guess Kimo as well, Fabian Allen as well. So that is predicament with Ross and Chase in a West Indies T20 team at this moment in time. Maybe in the future he could become, you know, a, a greater force or record, but not right now. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm taking him in basically on the spin option. He offers that spin option, um, and that is why I'm, I'm taking him, um, taking him on that, that that series four. Because to be to be fair, there isn't anyone that he could replace Sunil in the rain, a like for like replacement really in the Caribbean that could, you know, immediately come and have that impact that Sunil in the rain has had with both bat and ball. 